Today I'm at the flagship computer clubhouse in Boston, part of an international network of after-school community centers with 100 clubhouses in 20 countries. When Natalie Rusk and I started the first clubhouse nearly 25 years ago, our goal was to create a place where young people from low-income communities could come and learn to express themselves creatively with new technologies, to work together on animated stories, music video, interactive robots. In many ways, it was a type of early makerspace before the term makerspace had even been invented. As we started working on that very first clubhouse, we came up with a set of guiding principles. We wanted the clubhouse to be a place where young people had the opportunity to design, create, and invent. We also wanted the clubhouse to provide opportunities for young people to follow their interests, to work on projects they really cared about. And we wanted the clubhouse to be a community of learners. What do I mean by a community of learners? The clubhouse is a place for collaboration and sharing, where young people can work together with peers and learn with and from their peers. It's not a do-it-yourself place, but a make-it-together place. By collaborating with their peers, Clubhouse members accomplish more than they could on their own, and they also prepare for life in today's society, where nearly all jobs require collaborative effort, and nearly all social issues require collective action. As we were designing the first Clubhouse, we made explicit choices to support the social side of learning. We arranged the computers on clusters of tables where it was easy for people to work together and to move around and seeing what other people were doing. The chairs in the clubhouse all come with wheels, so it's easy for kids to move around for a quick talk with someone else or for longer collaborative projects. In the middle of every clubhouse is a green table without any computers on it at all. It serves as a type of village green where people can get together to share ideas, to draw sketches, to start building things with Lego or craft materials, or maybe just have a snack and catch up with one another. Around the clubhouse, or on the walls and on the shelves, are existing projects and, and sample projects so that newcomers can come into the clubhouse and get a sense of the possibilities and get ideas for what they might work on. Collaboration in the clubhouse takes all sorts of different forms. Sometimes clubhouse members just get inspired by other things that they see other members working on without directly working together. Other times, clubhouse members with complementary skills work together on a project. A clubhouse member with musical skills might team up with someone with video skills to make a music video. Or someone with building skills might work together with someone with programming skills on a robotics project. Our experiences at computer clubhouses had a big influence on us as we started working on Scratch. We wanted to make sure that kids working on Scratch projects had the same type of opportunities for collaboration and sharing as kids at clubhouses. So as we developed the Scratch programming language, we developed an online community at the same time, and we launched them together in 2007 as an integrated package. As Scratch community members start work on projects, the online community serves as both an inspiration and an audience. As they look at other projects on the community, they learn coding skills, and they also get ideas for projects they might work on. As they share their own projects in the community, they get feedback and suggestions of how they might improve their projects. Scratches are constantly experimenting with new ways of working together. Sometimes Scratches will remix one another's projects, adding new scripts or images to someone else's project. Sometimes they'll work together in pairs. Other times, they'll organize big multi-animator projects, bring together dozens of Scratches from around the world, with each one adding their own piece to the project. Sometimes a Scratcher will crowdsource a project, asking other Scratches to contribute images or sound effects. Other times, a Scratcher will offer their consulting services or produce a tutorial to help other Scratches with their projects. In all these different types of collaborations, Scratchers are able to create projects that no one of them could have created on their own. And they're able to learn things that no one of them could have learned on their own. They experience the power and the joy of peer-based learning. Now, clearly, collaboration in an online community like Scratch is different than collaboration in a physical space like a computer clubhouse. But I think the similarities are actually more interesting and more important. When we started the first clubhouse, we came up with a fourth guiding principle, to create an environment of trust and respect. Because we felt that none of the other principles, 
working on projects based on your interest and collaboration with others, none of that could be put into practice without the fourth principle. Only in an environment of trust and respect would Clubhouse members you know, feel comfortable to be able to try new things and form new sorts of collaborations. The same is true of online communities like Scratch. When people feel that they're surrounded by caring, respectful peers, they're more willing to try new things and take the risks that are necessary in the creative process. If they're worried about being ridiculed by other members of the community, they're much less likely to share their evolving ideas and projects. That's why we've put so much effort into creating a culture of caring at clubhouses and in Scratch. It's not just that we value you know, caring, respectful behavior, although of course we do, but even more, we really value the creativity and collaboration that's made possible when there's an environment of trust, respect, and caring. Mm -hmm.